I'm Isabel from the Cognito Forms team, and in this video, I'll show you how to add guests to your organization. There's two ways you can add guests to your organization. You can either add them to a guest list or send them an authenticated link. And if you're trying to decide which option is best for you, it helps to consider how you want to manage access. One benefit of using a guest list is that you can easily turn on or revoke portal access for your guest users. Authenticated links, on the other hand, allow you to grant secure access to someone without formally adding them to a guest list. But to revoke access, you'll need to open each shared entry individually and remove their access. In both cases, guests will verify their identity by entering a code sent to their email. This ensures that only the intended recipient can view or interact with the form, making guest access a great option for sending sensitive or highly personalized information, like contracts or invoices. So now I'm going to go ahead and jump into the tutorial and show you how to add guests to your organization. We'll first look at how to create a guest list. To create a guest list, go to your settings, open the guest access tab, and make sure guest access is enabled. In the allowed guest type section, you'll see all the person forms in your organization. And if you're not familiar with the person form, they're basically just forms where each entry represents a person. In this context, selecting a person form effectively turns it into a guest list. So when you select a person form in this area, every person with an active status on that list will become a guest member of your organization. And as a result, you'll get billed for each of those active guests. Another thing to note is that Cognito Forms gives you the option to allow your guests to edit their own profiles. So you could also think of your guest list as a guest profile form. At the minimum, person forms need to include a name and an email address, but you might want to include other fields on your form which you can allow your guests to edit later. If you're setting up a guest profile, you might want to include information on which days they're available. Of course, you don't have to allow your guests to edit their own profile, but it can reduce administrative work for your team by letting guests update their own information. If you haven't created a person form before, the quickest way to create one is to click the New Person Form button. From here, you'll select the type of guest list you want to create. I recommend using different guest lists for different guest types. This will help you stay organized and can make your life a lot easier down the line. For this example, I'll select Vendor. In the settings of this person form, you'll see that the template allows active people to log in as guest users, and that those guest users can only view entries shared with them. In some rare instances, you might want your guests to see entries that are not specifically shared with them but typically both of these boxes should be checked. You'll also see that this guest list template includes a calculation field that automatically marks a guest as active when they're created. You can easily adjust this status later if required, but if you don't use a calculation field or a yes no field to set and track your guest status, then all guests on a guest list will be considered active. One last thing that I want to point out before we start adding guests is that this template has email notifications enabled. This will alert users that they've been added as guests to your organization. The submit notification will look like this. If you want to add or change any of these automated email notifications, I recommend that you do that before you start adding people to your guest list. Once everything is good to go, you can save your form and then head over to the entries page to start adding your guest. If you already have a lot of guests in a spreadsheet, you could use the import entries option here in the form menu to import entries in bulk. But for this example, I'll just add a single entry by clicking the plus icon in the upper right corner. Once I enter their information and hit the create button, the guest becomes active and can log into their portal, even if no specific forms have been shared with them yet. Of course, you'll likely want to share forms with your guest users. You can learn how to do that in the sharing forms and entry section of the guest access support content. And if you ever want to revoke access for a guest or multiple guests, just select that guest, 
and then go to your actions menu, select change status, and you can change that status to an active. Now this person will no longer be considered a guest user. To deactivate an entire guest list, you can go back to the guest access section of your settings and just deselect it from here. If you accidentally select a guest list here, you can turn it off without getting charged as long as you do it within 24 hours. When you scroll down, you'll see all of your guest details. This summary shows all of the guests in your organization who are considered active this month. The type column indicates what type of guest it is, either a guest from a list or a guest with an authenticated link. You'll also see whether they've been sent any emails, reminders, how many logins they've made, and when their last login was. If you'd like to view a specific guest portal, just find their name in the list and then click the arrow icon at the end of the row. You'll instantly be taken to a view that mirrors exactly what your guests see when they log in. While in this mode, you can explore their forms, entries, and workflow access, but any actions or changes that you make in this view will not be saved. And when you're done, you can click the exit sign in the upper right-hand corner, and you'll return to your account. In addition to guest lists, you can also share authenticated links. This allows guests to access specific entries without adding them to a list. There are several types of authenticated links you can use. To see your options, go to the build page of your form and open the workflow tab. Your first option is to require authentication for public links. If you require authentication for public links, when your guests go to your public link, they will enter their email and then enter a code before opening the form. This can help you keep track of who opens your public links because each guest's information will show up in the guest access section of your organization's settings. Or maybe you don't need to require authentication for your public links. Your second option is to provide an authenticated save and resume link. In this scenario, your guest would open your public link fill out a part of the form, and then hit the Save button. They'll then receive an email with a link which will allow them to access the form again only after they verify their identity using a one-time code. This feature enhances security by preventing guests from unintentionally sharing their Save and Resume links. Keep in mind that you can customize the email that sends those links here. The last option is to send an authenticated workflow link. A workflow link is a link that lets someone access the form during a specific step in the workflow. You might want to do this if your client needs to sign a contract with highly personal terms or you want them to pay a specific invoice. To illustrate this example, let's look at this contract. Unlike the other examples, this contract is going to be personalized before it's sent to the client. Your internal team member could insert the terms of the contract, insert the client's email address, add the cost of their services, and then finally they could send this contract to your guest by hitting the Send to Client Action button. If this is the kind of scenario you want to set up, you'll need to go to your Workflow tab and make sure Workflow Link Sharing is enabled and also set Require Authentication to Always. Remember, requiring authentication is what keeps these entries secure. On your form, you'll need to have an email field. You'll need this email field to automatically send your guests their authenticated link. I recommend setting this email field to read only for public roles. That way, your guests can't change the email address tied to the entry. This is important because the email will be shared with whoever receives the workflow link. If the email address is changed, the entry could be shared with multiple recipients. And that might be fine in some cases, but if a guest accidentally misspells their email, it could result in sharing sensitive information with the wrong person, creating a potential security risk. The last thing you'll want to do on the build page is set a custom action button. These action buttons can be configured to automatically send emails as part of your workflow and you can choose to include your guest's authenticated workflow link in those emails. If we look at this Send a Client Action button, 
you'll see that it changes the status to sent to client, and it also sends an email notification that includes a workflow link in the public role and a brief message to the client. Since I wanna show you how to set this up, I'll just delete it and then add it back. If you've never created an action button before, you can start by going to your workflow tab. You'll then open your actions section and you can find your add action button there. You can label the action button whatever you want, but in this case, I'll name it send to client. Then you'll wanna control who is allowed to view and use this button. And in this case, I only want to allow the action for internal roles. I'll also make it change the status to sent to client. If you've never created a custom status before, you'll find the statuses section right underneath the actions section. Then I can set up email notifications. This is a really important step because this is where we're including the workflow link. To set up email notifications, click the add email button, and now you can customize your email template. You should definitely insert your client's email from the form and then click the share workflow link button. You will always choose the public option. Guests can never be internal users. From here, you can customize your message and include any other details, but I'm gonna skip that part. When you have your email template ready to go, click save, and we can also save our form. Now that your form is set up properly, each entry you add can go to a different guest. So if I go to the entries page, I can create a new contract. I'll send it to Brian Draper and I'll charge him $500 and send him his contract. Now, if I go back to my settings and then go into the guest access tab, I'll see that Brian is a guest user who has sent an authenticated link and I can confirm he was sent an email. From Brian's perspective, he'll receive the email, open his link, and verify his email address with a one-time code before he can view and complete the form. So as you can see, guest access is a really powerful feature and there are a lot of different ways you can use it. If you have any questions about setting it up or need help with your specific use case, you can find more information in our user guides or please don't hesitate to reach out to our team directly by submitting a support request and we'll be happy to help you.